harassment from my mother-in-law Anita. At first, I put up with it, but if I thought she was getting carried away, I stopped listening and quickly came up with some excuses to leave the place. I became distressed by the accumulation of such incidents. I researched on the internet and various books about problems between mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law and how to solve them. I even gave her a gift of a brand name item after discussing it with my husband. She seemed happy, perhaps because my husband was there, but she didn't thank me and I never saw her use it. I'm Nancy, a 26 years old housewife. I met my husband Dan through work and got married two years ago. He was self-employed and quite busy. We lived with his parents. It was them who proposed that we live together. Dan was the eldest son and was very family-oriented. I knew there was no way for me to refuse from the moment the idea came out. Anita was particularly enthusiastic. We have renovated and added more rooms to the house. You will have your own space, so it's not a bad deal, right? She said over and over again. Although I accepted it, I made it clear that we would not interfere in each other's lives as much as possible. If I told her directly, it would have raised an issue, so I asked Dan to do it. When she was told that, she looked quite displeased. In the end, she was happier to be able to live with us and accepted the condition. I had been working as a temp before, but when I got married, I quit the job at Dan's request. To be honest, I didn't really like housework and was not good at being idle at home. Instead, I got busy taking online courses and acquiring skills. I had come to understand after living together with Anita that she was much more nagging and particular than I had expected. One day, I heard her shouting from the bathroom. Hey Nancy! I told you many times to buy the same kind of detergent. I'm sorry, Anita. I couldn't find it at the usual supermarket. Then go around to the other ones until you find it. If I did the laundry, she told me in detail which detergent to use and which clothes to wash together. One time, whether she was just having a bad day or she really didn't agree with the way I did it, she told me to redo all the laundry. Don't worry about it, they're probably clean. Don't talk back to me! You're so sloppy! I can't believe you! She glared at me. When she got upset, she did unimaginable things compared to her petite and skinny figure, and I couldn't handle it. She once threw my favorite dress that was hanging out in the yard on the ground and made it all muddy. I got nervous whenever she started having a fit. I had never done any housework, and it was all on me. Since it was for the whole family, it was quite a lot. She had a mug of coffee I had prepared in her hand, and watched me work with a smile on her face. It made me somewhat angry. I consulted Dan several times. He was very helpful, taking time out of his busy schedule to listen to me. It was just that he was a bit timid and couldn't take a strong stance toward his mother. I had been patient with her at first. Later on, if she got carried away, I learned not to listen to her and quickly came up with excuses to leave. When I became distressed by the accumulation of such incidents, I searched the internet and visited the library. I looked into problems and solutions between in-laws on the websites and in various books and took countermeasures in that way. I pretended that I didn't care and listened to her with good humor. I tried to talk back a little. I also picked a time when she seems to be in a good mood and told her nicely what I wanted her to stop doing. I even gave her gifts that matches her taste. I spoke to Dan about it, and we went a little crazy with the brand. She seems to be pleased with the gift because perhaps Dan was there, but she didn't utter a word of appreciation. After glancing at it, she never used it. Her petty complaints continued every day. I began to think that it was different from the promise we made when we moved in together in the first place. She used me as her housekeeper. 
Her upbringing and educational background had something to do with the way she treated me. She was born and raised as the only daughter of a slightly wealthy family. She attended a private high school and graduated from a private university. On the other hand, my mother died of illness early in my life. I grew up in a father daughter household and started working as soon as I graduated from middle school. A college graduate versus not even GED. Despite the different circumstances, the fact was the fact. You are really lucky, aren't you? She always said sarcastically to me. You are married to Dan even though you have a low education. Thanks to our kindness, you are blessed with a good life. But I think you should have known your place and stepped aside. I was at a loss for words. You should at least devote yourself to housework and take responsibility for lowering our family standard. She triumphantly proclaimed to me. I didn't know what standard she was talking about, but I doubted a normal person would say such a thing. When I looked up the university she graduated from, I found that it wasn't as outstanding as she made it out to be. It didn't have a history or tradition to be proud of, and the rate of getting into grad school or employment was not that great either. I was not impressed. For her, I guessed it was more like having a daughter-in-law who was not at all in line with her beloved son. She loved to travel with her friends and also took equestrian lessons amongst other hobbies. When she returned from a trip, she was usually in a good mood and bragged about it to me. My hobbies enrich me and relieve my stress. They are indispensable for me, she declared, but her hobbies were quite expensive and concerning to me. The travel destination was often overseas. Her hose cost a lot of money to be boarded. She left all the housework to me and was able to freely make her own schedule. I didn't see her as having a stressful life. If there was stress, it should have been mostly dissipated by bullying me. Moreover, whenever she needed money, she always came to us. Hey, can you lend me some money? I really want something right now. I repay you back. It escalated to the point that Dan even had to tell her. Are you spending a little too much? I can't give you any more this month. She seems not to care and came up with some excuses to persistently ask for more. He usually ended up giving her money after all. She always said she was going to pay us back, but we never received any money back. I let out a sigh as I kept an accounting book. We had lent her over $2,000 since the beginning of that year. It was only the beginning of summer then, and it was not looking so good for the future. At that moment, she passed by and rushed me to make lunch for her. It was a usual occurrence, but it pricked my nerve for some reason at that time. Could you go and buy or order your lunch today? I'm too busy and already tired. She looked at me with a puzzled look on her face, but she immediately became angry. What a lazy person you are. You can't do anything but housework, so you should at least cook lunch. I always tell you that something simple is enough for me. There are supermarkets and delis within working distance that serve delicious ready-made food. I have other things to do. I've explained it to you several times before. Are you serious? You want me to walk? I don't want to. Stop talking and hurry up. I'm hungry. She and I were talking in parallel. Well, it was the same old thing, so I didn't feel anything anymore. I had something I really needed to do that day. I excused myself and got up from my seat. She was infuriated seeing me leave. You are an ungrateful bastard. An incompetent girl like you don't need to be in this house. I couldn't remain silent being called names. Incompetent? What is incompetent about me? Please enlighten me. What about you in that case? You leave the housework to me and spend all your time playing around. And you even ask me for money. Who are you to tell me that I'm incompetent? 
She flinched a little at my unusual stern retort compared to my usually careful wording and calm tone. She continued to counterattack me. Enough! Get out of here! I'll have you guys get a divorce! I involuntarily tightened my expression, but inwardly I was thinking it was a good chance. I tried to keep as calm as possible and responded to her. That's fine. I'm actually happy to leave. I've been wondering what good there is for me in this kind of life. But you're going to regret it. I immediately turned my back on her and went to my room. I felt surprisingly refreshed. It was as if I were the heroine of some movie. She was cursing me out, but I could care less. Soon after that, I packed my necessities and left the house. I called down to make sure he wasn't going to worry. He sounded quite surprised at first. I told him about all the bullying I had been keeping in my heart. I'm really sorry even though I didn't know about it until now. You've been in so much pain and I wasn't there to help you. He apologized regretfully. It was a typical damn, I thought to myself. I know I have faults too. It's already passed anyway. I just need some time away. Riding the train to my dad's house, I fell asleep thinking back on everything that had happened since we got married. I was startled by the announcement that had arrived at the station. It was dusk and a chilly wind was blowing. To my surprise, I saw my dad standing at the exit. He was usually very quiet and a little stubborn, and I never knew what he was thinking so I didn't expect him to come all the way to pick me up. I noticed that he had lost a little weight and gained some gray hair while we hadn't seen each other for a while. When we were walking side by side, he said quietly, You've been through a lot. I'm sorry that I made you worry. I suppressed the tears that were threatening to well up in my eyes. Don't worry about it. I felt a warmth in my chest. We walked along the road to his house while catching up on our lives. When I was just getting used to living at my dad's, I noticed that I had many missed calls on my phone. My friends normally sent me messages and rarely called me. I got a bad feeling about it. When I checked, they were all from Anita. I looked at the details and saw that she had been calling several times every few minutes. After what happened, I hadn't been able to forget about it yet. To be honest, I didn't want to call her back. I reluctantly decided to do so, thinking it might have been something important. Then, she picked up right away as if she has been waiting for me. I was surprised to hear her listless voice. Hi Nancy, I'm very sorry, please come back. I was a little taken back. What's wrong? Well, I was cleaning Dan's room a couple days ago and I found something. I think it's a financial statement. I knew what she was talking about. Dan's company was incorporated half a year ago, so it was normal for him to make detailed statements. A statement? What about it? I had no idea he was making so little. You knew it, didn't you? Why didn't you tell me? She became emotional and suddenly raised her voice. I had the urge to cover my ears at the sound of her usual tone, which I hadn't heard in a while. I've told you about it several times, but it sounds like you never listened to me. I don't remember that. Well, I guess you don't. You love talking about yourself, but you're not interested in what I tell you. I'm going to buy another horse. I've already signed the contract. Please, can you lend me some money? She made such an insolent request to me even at that point. I let out a small sigh and answered, Well, Dan and I are not your wallets. Please use your own savings. Besides, you will eventually receive a pension, right? Why don't you try to manage within your means? I don't have much savings. Please, I'm begging you. Before that, do you have enough money to live on this month? I think you were just barely making ends meet last month. Since the one who has been cooking for you is gone, you must have been eating out or buying food all the time. 
She cleared her throat and fell silent as if I had hit the bull's eye. Your cooking wasn't bad. Actually, Dan told me to apologize to you and reflect on what I had done. Oh, did he? Well, I don't care anymore. Of course, I didn't mean it, but I couldn't think of anything else to say. I just strongly hoped that I didn't have to be involved with her anymore. Unaware of my thought, she happily continued, Is that so? That's great! Now we are reconciled. Will you come back soon? Her tone of voice brightened. I was amazed by her self-serving way of thinking. I can't live with you again, so please move on. Instead, you might want to worry more about your own future. What? What do you mean? She was puzzled as she had no idea. I didn't need to explain to her then, but she would have understood when the time came. Thinking I had said enough, I hung up the phone. She had a lot of time on her hands. She continued to call me persistently after that. I had no choice but to block her. Six months have passed since then. I am watching my dog happily running around in my yard. It's a pleasant morning and just right for basking in the sun. After a careful discussion with Dan, we ended our cohabitation with my in-laws. Then, we bought a beautiful semi-new house that had just come on the market. We have a mortgage now. It has a better layout than before and is more comfortable to live in. We chose a location that was convenient for Dan's work. He is more lively than before. As for my in-laws, they are now stuck paying their mortgage because we are no longer helping them. They have moved to a small apartment far out of town. Of course, Anita has been complaining a lot. I feel sorry for my father-in-law, who seems to be sent back by her. Since she had spent so much money on her hobbies to enjoy her life, he was left with almost nothing in his savings account. After he told her to live frugally, she started to do housework more than before. When she cooks, it takes quite a long time to make one dish, which neither looks good nor tastes good. I've heard that my father-in-law is better than her. She had been nagging me so much, but it turns out she can't even do it herself. How embarrassing. It no longer matters to me anyway. I've gotten a GED and plan to attend a university in the fall. I'm accepted to a popular university with a long history and tradition. I have always been good at mathematics and interested in economics. I taught myself stock trading from the time I was working as a temp and played around online. I started with a small amount of money at first and gradually increased the size of my fund. Dan's business was hit hard by the recession when I left home after a dispute with Anita, and his income dropped considerably. At that time, I was earning a steady profit and was able to bring some income into the household. Because of my father-in-law's pride and Dan's wishes, we did not inform my parents-in-law about it. If they watched my behavior very closely and had a common sense, they would have noticed. While we lived together, Anita looked down on me from the start and treated me like a housekeeper. In the end, she missed the opportunity to live happily as a family. I did think about divorcing Dan at one point. However, after discussing it with him and my father-in-law, we agreed that she would have no contact with me in the future. In fact, I'm feeling much better, and my investments are going quite well since I stopped seeing her. The hot coffee I drink while being soothed by the sight of my cute dog brings me such joy in my life. I would be a university student starting in the fall. I look up at the clear sky, excited with anticipation.